I want to talk about the disappearance of Jay Slater. So I'm sure some of you know about this. I've covered this before on this particular little, little, little pod before regarding Jay Slater. It's a very sad story. Essentially, this British teenager goes out to like a teenager holiday with your friends for the first time type of affair in Tenerife um, to a very popular festival out there. I think I incorrectly said at one particular podcast that, oh, this is a bit weird. How's an 18, 19 year old kid going on their first holiday with their friends at their age is a bit young. But actually, according to people and what I've read online, that particular island um, or that particular in that particular season of the year, um, that whole place is just you know inundated and absolutely covered with kids who've just graduated six or more college so kids between the ages of like 18 and 23 25 they all go to that particular island to go celebrate the end of college and maybe going to uni or the beginning of their adult life sort of thing so it's a kind of way to kind of you know cap um the end of the academic quote-unquote year so it's perfectly safe kids go there every single year british kids i'm probably assuming other kids from europe too they all go there the same type of kids you see on tiktok with the kind of you know the curly hair at the front all the girls wearing the skimpy outfits we've seen pictures online they all look exactly the same all the boys look like a carbon copy of each other they've got some cool little like you know um shorts and t-shirts sets on they've got the crossbody bags the girls have the little boob tubes with the little skirts that match and the heavy heavy makeup and tan all look the same so it's quite I'd, I'd imagine it's probably a safe place to go for a young kid because you're amongst people that look like you but this particular kid made a really big mistake in that he went with a group of friends but unfortunately left with strangers he went allegedly to these two guys house that lived like 20 minutes or something away i think it was more miles away though and then because of that one mistake it then unfortunately ended up with him being found um dead um at the bottom of a ravine if i'm not mistaken which is really sad um because you think if he was found the bottom of a ravine most likely he fell so i'm hoping when he fell he died instantly when he hit his head on a rock but if it's the case that they find out in the autopsy that he fell and he died later he must have been in so much agony you know imagine the heat imagine how you know just your emotions your dick like everything he, like it must have been a horrible way to go but regardless in one sense it's good that they put a little close to that chapter and the family can mourn because his body was found um obviously we would have preferred it if he was found alive but the fact that he was found is still a blessing in its own way but there's been a lot of controversy around the mum the mum's getting a lot of slack i know i wasn't too warm to the mum when she initially came out and made that video she seemed a little bit i wouldn't say cold but she didn't seem to behave like a mum who just found out their son the apple of their eye had unfortunately gone missing in tenerife she it almost seemed as if like she was in on the gag there was some sort of plan to have him go missing put a go find me up and make some money that was the narrative of going around there but then when you actually watch the video and you look at it clearly or closely sorry and you look at her eyes you'll see there's a kind of blankness in her eyes so she was just trying to process that emotion and i'd imagine in those type of situations you never know how you're going to react and sometimes like sometimes with me when i'm talking about very distressing very horrible news i'll sometimes involuntarily laugh because it's just away from my brain or my maybe it's just how emotionally i process those really horrible things um to try and make light of it by laughing but it's not a laughing matter of course but it's just something i can't avoid so i'm assuming the mum also had a one of those reactions where it's like hey you just learned about your son to go missing and now suddenly you've got cameras shoved in your face at your doorstep i'm not surprised she had this kind of weird reaction anyway regardless about that people have always had their eye out for the mum then they found out jay slater unfortunately had a bit of a dicey past in terms of issues he had with gangs and he was allegedly was involved in an attack that happened with a young kid where they split his head open with a machete and they all got off because you know they're white and stuff so you know standard regardless right they're white and young so they all got off for like even attacking this kid and leaving him with an injury i think that said that his skull was exposed or something which was fucking crazy so people heard all that sort of stuff and didn't have any sympathy with him going missing and just attributed it to the gang stuff i personally think that's not really important even though i was a little bit annoyed when they were covering this stuff it seemed like they were focusing more on the coffee side of things because in tenerife there's loads of coffee shops and i think i'd, I'd imagine it's probably legal to smoke cannabis over there so a lot of people have set up coffee shops there um pot of paper the rapper has a particular little coffee shop that he sets up there and one of the guys involved in it was a guy that drove the kid to the airbnb blah 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 but i was weirded out and why all the newspapers in the uk were focusing on the weed side of things when clearly if it's a 
party island and it's full of British kids, they're all going to be on coke or MD. I don't understand why they were focusing on weed. Like, I don't know. It just seems like a weird angle to go down. But I guess maybe because the papers, they can't maybe print the word cocaine or marijuana and stuff a lot on the papers. So maybe they went with the weed aspect so people can think about organized crime. Either way, I don't think the organized crime aspect, I don't even think the kid's history of being involved in gangs and attacking people was was relevant really. He went missing, his family were looking for him and the fact, you know, if he would have come back home, that would have been blessed and never would have forgot about the history. But I guess because people kept looking at the mum a bit weird and they raised a lot of money, it put a lot of things, attention onto it. Anyway, long story short, his body's been found, that chapter's now closed, but unfortunately the mum did come out and ask for more money. But she she worded it in a bad way. She basically worded it in a way of like, um, we want to give him the send off he deserves. And I think a lot of people got triggered by that because it sounded like they were trying to organize a rave or a party and use that money to use whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And I think at the time when she said it, the initial the initial GoFundMe was at like sixty thousand pounds or something. And a lot of people were assuming, oh, what did you do with that sixty thousand pounds? Now, personally, I think just from looking on the outside in, from what I've been able to view. If I'm not mistaken, the mum and the dad and the brother and the uncle and I think a friend all went out to Tenerife to go and help with the search for Jay Slater. So if you have five adults flying from London or sorry, from the UK to Spain in peak season, right, peak festival season, even on a budget airline, those flights are going to be expensive, really expensive. Accommodation now at the peak season is probably going to be really expensive. And then... I'd imagine as well towards the end, if I'm not mistaken, at the beginning, they had a lot of like TikTokers and clout chasers, which is really awful when that happens, by the way. Um, any kind of, you know, stuff like when the missing person goes, when somebody goes missing like this, a lot of like clout chasers come out of the woodwork trying to make some money, make a name for themselves. So a lot of those guys and girls came out wasting their time. And then unf what fortunately for them, as soon as they put some money into actually hiring people, I think they hired a Pacific team of people who know that terrain internally very well and their body was found instantly. So it's proof that if you pay the experts who know that terrain very well, they're obviously going to be able to find whatever you're looking for. But there's a likelihood if they do find what you're looking for, the person is going to be alive. So I'd imagine a lot of that money, the, the initial 60,000 went to their flights, went to their accommodation, their daily whatever the needs and then of course a lot of it also went to the search and rescue team but i'd also imagine because i remember reading something about this like how you know the funeral racket system and stuff in cemeteries i'd imagine it costs a lot of money i'd imagine if you don't have travel insurance because i think most people like myself included you know you never get travel insurance whenever you have to tick that box to have travel insurance your ticket i always untick it right i don't ever pay the 20 pounds or 50 pounds whatever it is because i just you know uh, i just do inshallah traveling so i'd imagine he didn't have travel insurance so you're paying out of pocket to transport the body from one country to another country the but all that sort of stuff it probably costs a lot i'd imagine it's probably crazy probably probably you probably wouldn't ever expect how much it costs so i think a lot of that money especially if it's this is a you know your usual english working class family as well i remember reading something online about um it said i think it was a statistic for everybody um it might have been worldwide saying something along the lines of most people don't have like a thousand pounds in saving for an emergency if that is the case and that stat is to be really believed most likely they didn't have anything on them right they probably might have had whatever they were getting paid for that month and that's still not going to be enough to cover anything so i'm assuming that sixty thousand legitimately all went to just like you know trying to um make sure this search was a was a success and hopefully find them alive which they didn't but I'd imagine a lot of that money is probably gone um and in this particular moment while the sentiment around jay says is still fresh and new i completely understand why the mom decided to reach out and say hey could you guys donate some more now i know it sounds a little bit crass it sounds a little bit tasteless but i think in this type of situation where somebody's grieving i think you just have to extend a bit of good grace you just have to extend a little bit of grace a little bit of benefit of the doubt and allow them to just you know do whatever needs to be done to have some semblance of like positive good feelings especially off the back of finding this kid dead at the bottom of a ravine because that money no matter how much they raise even if they raise a million it's never gonna you know make the this kid's passing that much more bearable ever it's not going to change anything it's not going to make them get over it 
it's just a you know a temporary thing that's probably going to alleviate a lot of stress for them because you could imagine again in this particular situation i could imagine a situation where certain funeral places and whatever people probably take advantage of you in these situations because they know how desperate you are so if they can alleviate some of that pressure by raising a bit of extra money um even though they're going to get a lot of scrutiny a lot of kickback a lot of criticism from the public obviously and i think rightfully so if you don't if you feel uncomfortable with her raising more money or asking for more or whatever i understand why you'd feel that way but I just think in this particular situation, they deserve a little bit, not just des- what they deserve, they should get a little bit of grace in this situation just because of how tragic everything was. But Sky News kind of broke it down a little bit because now that I think the GoFundMe hit was 70K. So Sky News said the following, Jay Slater's fundraising page hit 70,000 after his mum appeals for funeral donations. So that's a picture of the boy that unfortunately passed away. A fundraising page set up by after Jay Slater went missing has been boosted by 10,000 pounds after a teenager's mother appealed for more donations to cover funeral costs. With the total sitting at 59,000 on Thursday, Debbie Duncan asked people to continue to share and support our fundraiser however you can we want to give our boy the best send-off he deserves she said in a statement on gofundme the page has now raised more than seventy thousand pounds the get just later home fundraiser was set up soon after the disappearance to help contribute to the family's travel accommodation expenses while they stayed on the island to look for him so i'm but i don't really mind this i swear to god i don't because i know it sounds tasteless i know because the 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 phrasing of like get given the send off he deserves kind of sounds like they're throwing a rave for the kid but i think it kind of reminds me of the sentiment i had regarding i forgot the kid's name so you know forgive me for remembering for for, forgiving forgetting his name but there was this raver guy in berlin who unfortunately passed away recently he was quite well known in the scene like just for being like a scene head and um you know, no one really knows why. I don't. The rumors around why he passed kind of were, I, I think, relating to either performance enhancing drugs or something to do with like recreational drugs. Either way, he passed away very young. And I remember in the GoFundMe, there was an update on there where they said something like, "Oh, um, we want to give him a cent or we want to like celebrate his life or something." And it, and it sounded like they were trying to throw a rave in Berlin and in London to kind of commemorate or to kind of you know acknowledge his passing and stuff. And I remember at the time thinking, "Oh, that's a little bit." weird isn't it if he did die about if he did die from like an overdose or something um having a rave in his honor kind of seems a little bit tasteless but when people are grieving you know you can't really all that stuff goes out the window people process it how they want to process it and maybe in those situations with the person's personality and being who they are there's no there's no point there's no point pretending they weren't into that sort of stuff anyway so maybe the best way to celebrate someone's life is just honoring them for who they actually were and not trying to be ashamed of it and maybe just being like you know what they would have wanted us to have a good time they would have wanted us to party and stuff and kind of acknowledge their life in that way and celebrate it and not be sad and this is how we're going to do it i guess that's one way to do it and one way to maybe you know help with the mourning process i'm not really too sure but i think in this particular situation considering a family probably a working class family it makes complete sense why they'd want to do this because you know they're probably going to have no other way of raising the funds to give this kid a funeral point blank even just one that he deserves so it's probably how they're probably doing it and i think there's plenty of people out there hence why they raised you know the extra 20 or the extra 10 sorry that are perfectly going to be okay with it and would we'll give it to them i guess um it continues here um as as, as we got here the i guess you got a tribute there to where he um was i think found or where he dropped from um they put a little um tribute there as well which is quite nice and then here's a page that shows the seventy thousand that was raised on gofundme it continues here says in our most recent statement miss duncan said the remaining funds and any future donations will be used to pay for um repatriating her son's body and paying for the funeral earlier this week officials in tenerife confirmed the body had been found by rescue workers near the village of masca and they said the multiple injuries were sustained suggesting a fall from the cliff so yeah that's the really sad bit multiple injuries have been sustained from the fall of the cliff because it doesn't seem like this kid like passed in a good way no there's no good way to pass i understand but this sounds like you know this sounds like it hurt this sounds like it absolutely hurt so i can only imagine how flipping scary that whole event was so i think in this particular situation i would extend a level of grace to the family and say it's perfectly i wouldn't it's perfectly understandable why they're deciding to kind of you know raise the funds that they're raising um i completely get it and i guess people just have to you know figure out a way to kind of make sense of it even though it doesn't make sense i guess you just have to try to understand it from the family's point of view 
especially considering how tragic the passing was but again i think a lot of people are really underestimating how much it actually costs to transport a body from one country to another country um especially nowadays i'd, I'd say probably those costs has probably gone up exponentially over the years as well so um r.i.p to jay slater hopefully this is a bit of closure for the family and they can move on but probably won't because of how it ended um you would hope as well you would hope you would hope there would be like an honest conversation to be had around like behavior when people go out especially in festivals especially for us brits there should be like an awakening yeah this should be one of those kind of okay cool let's actually take a bit more responsibility going out because i think even for myself speaking for my own self i know for me i was used to be very 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 reckless going outside and i'm surprised nothing really crazy happened to me obviously it probably helps because i'm a boy and stuff um or i'm a man that probably helps um with my ability to sort of like you know avoid a lot of harrowing situations but i think there does need to be a really stark and honest conversation about managing you know how to navigate going outside managing your alcohol intake drug intake your behavior outdoors like and and just generally the the whole thing that we do i'm not sure if, if it's something that happens in other countries but i think the uk is definitely more prone to it or maybe other european countries where people just go wondering you go out with your friends and i've done it before myself as well and you just ha you're having a good time and you just decide oh i'm gonna go for a wonder and you go and meet other people you start chatting you might find a new group of people to hang out with and stuff you just disappear for a couple of hours and that sort of stuff probably isn't very safe especially if you're out with your own friends or you're a little bit inebriated or you're a bit high and stuff you probably should be sticking with your friends or all the general rule should be whoever you leave your house with whoever you go outside with you should always come back with um no matter who it is especially even if you're a girl and you want to hook up with somebody after you should probably just say you know what let's let's swap details let's swap contact details you can contact me whenever you want later to set, set something up but on that particular night unless you're absolutely thirsty and starving then i think you probably owe it to yourself and your safety to just be like you know what i'm not going to leave with you strange man i'm going to go home with my girls that i came out with just to be on the safe side because that's where the problem started for jay slater if he would have left with his friends he would have been he would have still be alive today but the fact that he left with other people it just threw everything up in the air and then you know everything transpired the way it transpired and i think the really sad thing as well that i read online based on his passing allegedly his body was found at the bottom of a ravine so he must have fell from like a pretty high height right all the way down the mountain and end up in a ravine somewhere and the sad thing about it is that they're saying allegedly that he must have been looking at the maps and on the maps i think the map doesn't really tell you the terrain it's sort of like you know it makes it seem like you can just cross places but you can't because most of it is hills and rock faces and crevice it's, like, it's just a really hazardous area so allegedly they're suggesting that the, that what happened is just a mistake he basically fell he was probably tired maybe still coming down and he was looking for a shortcut to get to the beach allegedly he went to get to the beach because i think his airbnb was near there or somewhere or he knew the area around the beach more but the funny thing is the beach also wasn't the easiest place to get to because you know it was all rocky and stuff but regardless he was heading to the beach and he tried to cut across the island but you can't cut across because there's all hills and shit so he must have tripped and then tripping is what led to him falling down and obviously unfortunately passing so that was more how he passed that's what they're saying there's other conspiracy theories out there that he allegedly had made murder his body got dumped there but regardless i think this whole situation could have been avoided if this kid just would have left with his friends you know he went out with his friends and he left with some other strange people who were considerably older than him which didn't make any sense as well in that regard and it's just a really sad and tragic situation so r.i.p to jay slater and thoughts and feelings go out to his family and friends